Okay, well, let's do a simple thing. Did everybody read the minutes? Can I have a motion to accept them as presented? Yes, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Vote was so ordered. This is interesting because I asked Jeff to uh, play secretary for this meeting. Um, here I go again. Okay. I guess it's me. Um, so I don't mind doing the meeting minutes. Well, I was about to ask you to do a report on. Uh, well, if you take notes on that, then I can I can do the rest of the meeting. Okay. Sure. You want me to start off? Please do. Um. So I just this morning got back the um, partial report from Corn Micey Munns from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. So um, if you'll remember, they had the six hours to give us for 2020 and they should have more starting any minute now. Um, but what they did with the six hours besides setting the process up was she did a bunch of research around um, our first question, which is what are the restrictions? What are the legal restrictions? about um, access and recreational uses around um, reservoirs in general in Massachusetts, but Whiting Street Reservoir in particular as it relates to just laws. And what's interesting is that, so I have the two page report, I forwarded it to Sue Ellen and I think, you know, it can be forwarded to everybody. Um, but what's interesting is that really, um, the protection, and it would be, it'd be very interesting. You know, I wish Jeff were here to, to chime in about his understandings, but mm -hmm. Article 97, which is the controlling um, legal framework, ensures the use is open space, but doesn't actually, in and of itself, limit access or recreational activities. Um, what it so that access and activity on the parcel is from a legal point of view, you know, as far as she can tell, solely controlled by the parcel owners. Okay. Um, Article 97 protection isn't truly permanent because it can be revoked by a vote. I think it's a two, it, it, it could be revoked by a two thirds vote of the city council and of the um, uh, state legislature. So, you know, it can, it, it, while it's generally described as permanent, it can be revoked under strict circumstances. So, um, because I think she found in her research that the actual the actual legal guidelines are not as um, strict as we might have heard. She um, she did note a few things that the person at the only person at the um, Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs at the state level who deals with this issue just retired and hasn't been replaced yet. So there might be another layer of information we can get once that person is replaced. Um, so that's perhaps something they can do in the nine hours upcoming. Um, but so far as everything she can tell, that's where we're at. So her recommendation based on that is to say that, um, she made a recommendation that we we might want to propose a conservation restriction. Um, you know, propose that to the city or to the um, Holyoke Waterworks. Um, and she has a bunch more information about that here. Um, but one issue is that there may also be 
uh, restrictions in the deed. And they were unable, they weren't able to find a copy of the deed. Um, interesting. She said the, the book and page numbers for Hampton County Register of Deeds were absent on the city parcel records. They contacted several staffers at DEP and the Department of Conservation Services who were also unable to locate parcel information. That's weird. So they haven't been able to find that um, despite some trying and they really recommend that it would be useful for us to um, do some more digging to find the parcel of deed, parcel deed to see if there were any other restrictions currently in place that we might not know about. I wish Crystal were on. <laughs> yeah, so that might be something to follow up on. Uh, Dave, do you want to follow up with uh, Dave Condi on that one? Dave Moore? Yes? Do you want to follow up with Dave Conti on that? Yes, I'll do that. I just was making myself a note. Okay, great. Sorry, I was trying to sit outside. It's getting really loud, so bear with me while I move to a quieter spot. Okay. Yes, Albert. You can't get in. Okay. I'll, I'll... He's not on. He's not waiting. I haven't got him. She says you're not on, on the waiting list. There. Um, Let me see if I can. Yeah, we got a couple. We got a couple other people on our committee that aren't in either. So something something might be going on. Okay, I'll tell him. Um, yeah, I, yeah, he's not able to log on. Yeah, that I, might be the same with uh, Jeff, maybe, and uh, Terry. Yeah, Terry, I, I am just looking for my um, latest email, and goody, I can't find it. Um, and that's way above me, so. Not your pay grade, huh? I was going to say that, but I figured that's been used too much. Okay, I'm going to copy the invitation. Not your volunteer grade either. Um, there you go. To, that's a new one. Let's see, copy invitation. To... Command V. Okay. It's not giving me well, the copy. While we're waiting, can you forward that report? I did. Sue so Ellen just sent it. I, I forwarded it to everybody while Katie okay. was forwarding. Yeah, I can't wait to read that. Was the I I couldn't open that attachment that you sent. That's why I was asking Kate to do it. Uh, okay. Sometimes when you forward them, they don't. Yep. Let me. I got the same problem. While Sue Ellen's doing that, I'll download it to my computer and then send it back out again. Great. Yeah, it, it's short, of course, but that's, you Good. know. Good. I like it. Yeah, that's the best part. <laughs> well, I might actually read that one. Yeah. There are no fluff.
Oh, FYI, they're putting a new roof on the screen house at the, on the dike at the uh, reservoir. The uh, one that's been leaking for a few years. The uh, the brick house on the dike. Okay. It's getting, house, new, yeah. it's getting new shingles. Beautiful. Which is kind of a nice old building. It's a, a shame to see it. Uh, in disrepair, but there are. Uh, that, that, that building says reservoir. That's a template they use in reservoirs everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, we used to, uh, when I was working for the water department this summer, I'd go in there and, and there was actually screens in it. We'd pull them up with a rope to get all the you know, leaves and the uh, pine needles off. And uh, that was their filter system back in the early 60s. It probably still is today. That building. Yeah. I am getting absolutely nowhere with this. I can't. Hmm. I can't get it out to Albert. I can't find a. <clears throat> is his email trouble 13 yes okay oops i'll send it to him okay the zoom note bingo does anybody have an email for albert Yes. Yeah, yes. Go ahead, Charlie. Treble. It is treble thirteen. Uh, Not trouble. Not trouble. Give me one second. Treble. Treble. T R E B L E thirteen. Oh, treble. Treble. T R E B L E thirteen at Comcast.net. Okay. All right, it's sent. Okay. Um, I sent it also to uh, Terry and um, Jeff. Jeff. Yeah, that's where I sent it. Terry, Jeff, and Albert. All right, okay. I, well, I forwarded I forwarded the report to everybody, so hopefully that'll come through. Uh, here's Albert. It did, Kate. Thank you. Great, you're welcome. Hi, Albert. Thank you for letting us in. Took me a bit of trying. I'm glad to see you. <laughs> okay, so we have Kate's report. And Marlene, do you want to finish going through the PowerPoint? Sure. Um, do you want to, can you pull it up on your screen, the version I sent last week? I know. <laughs> No, without Jeff to get me through it, I can't. Okay. Um, well, I can, we can collectively look at it on our own screens because everybody has it and go through it. If that's easier. I mean, I could talk about it, but it might be easier if you're looking at it on your screen. Go ahead and talk. Can you help me find it? What email was it attached to? It was attached to, um, let's see. 
It was called, hold on one second. I'll tell you what it was called. Yeah. I have no idea what to do. Or what date. All right. It was called, um, I sent it on the 30th last Wednesday. Okay. It was called No Cover. It's a PowerPoint initial slide deck MC 63021. Okay. Oh, we got Jeff. Hey. Got Hi, it. Jeff. <laughs> <clears throat> so, Kip, can you find it? I did. Thank you. Okay, everybody else have it who wants to be looking at it? I have no idea what to do. <laughs> but I, but I, have, I have a paper copy here. Yeah, even better. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> the pages aren't numbered. I don't know where it starts. <laughs> oh no, sorry. So um, we can figure out what we wanna call the meeting or we can discuss that now. So I we had talked initially last week that we wanted to say Holyoke City Council's Whiting Street Reservoir Committee public meeting. So that was kind of what I did for a cover. Good. So and that's what it is. Cause that's what it is. Um, and you know, we can figure out a way to put a picture or something on it. Um, this, the second slide is the Holyoke City Council charge to the committee. Yeah. And we talked our way through that last week. Yeah. yeah. The third slide is the study to date. And we said review of legal considerations and restrictions. So first one, you know, making sure everybody knows the property owners Holyoke Waterworks. Then, um, we looked at applicable Commonwealth federal and local laws, Mass Wetlands Law, Commonwealth Article 97, and Jeff, we need to talk to you about that, um, in which we said last week, any changes require action by city and uh, Massachusetts legislature, and then other potential protections. Does what we learned this week from the Planning Commission change any of that? No, not at all. Okay. No, I think, but I think it's just less, um, those are still all the governing laws, but they just might have less heft to them than we thought. Got it. They're Nobody has to know our de-heftness. There, there also may be uh, some deed restrictions. Right. We don't but, know that at this point. But we don't know that yet. We don't know. Well, we did have a bullet that said other potential protections, which could cover, which would cover that. Yes, and that's good. Um, everybody okay with that? Uh, number four was the list of uh, the land use plants that we looked at. I added the years and things that I got. If anybody has any more things that we looked at or um, more current or better information, let me know. Well, wasn't there an open space plan on both? I think there was originally one in 2014, then there was like an update in 2018. Do we have this? Okay, do you know what it's? Um, uh, it was, no, but I'll try to find out. That, that capital, would be great. Open, is that the capital open space and recreation? I, I think so, but I, I wasn't sure. Yeah, it's a little confusing to me because, you know, the Conway School was involved in the 2018, and I don't know whether it's just a little confusing to me. I would, so I'll, yeah. I'll try to find that out. Okay, because that's... That's all, all I could get my hands on, but that doesn't mean that's all there is, so. Um, next slide the uh, was just 
we set up the meetings with the neighbors and abutters. And from the letter, this is what we told everybody that we were gonna ask them. Slide six was everybody that we have been in communication with. And then last week we added um, to this, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and the Ohio Conservation Commission. Remember we talked to Yanni early on. I would yeah. just, I would just on this slide, um, write things out. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that people don't necessarily know what the DC Army is. Okay. All right, I will do that. Yep. I, would even, I, would, I, I had the same comment. Gas okay, I will do that. Uh, slide seven was the uh, list that we were aware of of the current uh, usage that's allowed at the at the Wedding Street Reservoir. So we talked, uh, so walking, hiking, jogging, photography, observation of nature and non-motorized vehicles, bikes. So my, my only comment on that is, um, so those are restrictions that are imposed by the water department. Correct. You know, Kip, you raise a very interesting point here because those are not actually listed by anybody as allowable um, <laughs> things to do with the reservoir. They are tacitly allowed, but they are not officially allowed. Correct. So I would take out the word allowed and just leave yeah. in current usage. I think that's a good comment. I agree. All right, allowed is gone. Is there is there a word we can use instead of allowed though? Because we're getting into <laughs> semantics, but there's a lot of current usage up there that isn't. <laughs> Allowed, whether allowed. or untacitly. <laughs> that are in violation of the non-list list. Yeah. Uh, Not allowed anywhere. <laughs> Some of them. I guess I just wonder if there's a way that we can say. Sanctioned. <laughs> permitted. Um, and so, Kate, okay, what about just current usage? Isn't isn't that? I thought that's what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's. Yeah. So what I, it, I now it just says current usage. Great. Yeah, well, that would be a lot longer list, <laughs> right? I think that's the point, right? Oh, now. I see what you're getting at now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. But, Officially unofficial. Passive recreation that water, Holyoke Water Works, let's get sail by no, here. No, we don't, we want to stay away from it. Yep. Now maybe we ought to keep it simple. Yeah, I mean, the more we, you know, the more words we add with the more complicated it gets. Current so usage. everybody good with current usage? Yes. Yeah. I mean, my only, again, uh, repeating myself, you know, I do think it's important for people to understand that, you know, these are the uses established by um, the waterworks, right? I mean, it's not by state law, it's not by no. a conservation restriction. It might be deed restrictions that have things on there, but it really is, you know, the water department that's deciding. And I think of everything I've learned through this process, for me, that's the big takeaway is they're the ones that are really controlling what use is going Do we want to just say that usage permitted by or allowed by? I think back where you say who the owner is, owners are the ones who let things happen and you've already declared who they are. And they and they do 
you know, they haven't been shy about saying these are the these are the uses we are permitting. No, no, they yeah. they they use passive and they use some of those terms. And they are the owners. On on their signs, they're saying no no dogs, uh, no fishing, and maybe a couple other things. They not I don't think they say on those signs what they would like to see there. It's no. only the, what they don't want to see there. And then the only other thing that um, I just thought of is, you know, they've got that, is, do they have an agreement with the Appalachian Trail people Ooh. to allow hiking? They yeah, do yes. have an agreement yes. that allows yes, them the hiking. Trail. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So and that, that's explicitly called out in the report we got from the planning commission too. And it was, if I remember, it's about to expire, right? Like they're four years through 20, their five years. Yeah, 2022. All right. Yeah, um, so the, the report we got from PVPC also <laughs> spells that out that according to the Holyoke Water Works General Manager, Dave Conti, the regulations allow for passive recreational activities such as the things we listed. Yeah, good. So I think, you know, that's their... It's not it's not posted as such, but their their operating regulations say we say those things. May, Kate, maybe you just came up with the right words. Yes. Um, activities allowed by by regulations. Holyoke Waterworks regulations. Cur uh, so repeat that again, Kate. <laughs> activities um. allowed. By Holyoke Waterworks? Regulations. Regulations. Yeah. I, I didn't think they allowed bikes, for instance. They don't allow bikes. It, it says that here. According to Holyoke Waterworks, the regulations allow for passive recreational activities such as walking, jogging, hiking, and bicycling. Pets are not allowed. <laughs> I stand corrected. Okay, so the title <laughs> of the list now is Activities Allowed by Hoyak Water Works Regulations. Is that okay? I think I would still put currently in there. Because they could change it tomorrow. They could. Yeah. Yep. They might not agree with our list. We can run this by them. No, I think you're fine. Just put current and that's that's it. Okay. They're gonna see all this stuff. Maybe it's policy and not regulations. I think policy is a better word, maybe here. Yeah, I think that's you're definitely. Right. So activities currently allowed by Hoyak Water Works policy. Yes. Okay. Then slide eight is common findings from discussions, issues. Okay, everybody ready? Yeah, I, I wonder, just before you go into this, I wonder if we could say instead issues identified from discussions. It will... Um, separate the two slides. Okay, issues. Identified I from discussions. Identified. If others are okay with that. True. Yeah, discussions. Okay. And then I can get rid of the issues underneath the title. Right. Gone. Okay. Okay, everybody ready for the list? Number one, maintain current status as backup water reservoir for the city. Number two, unplanned public use and recreation. Number three, need for comprehensive vision, 
for the entire Mount Tom area, including the reservoir. Number four, establish a mechanism for communication among neighbors and stakeholders of adjacent properties. Five, desire for long-term protection of the reservoir and other natural amenities. Good so far? Yep. Uh, six or whatever, access and parking, including to the site and through the gate. Um, environmental concerns, public use, water quality, trash, erosion, graffiti, drainage, and endangered species. Is that okay? Uh, next, lack of amenities, safety, security, staffing, size of reservoir limits ability to support additional recreational activity slash use. And then last one, costs or revenues for all of the above. Is that good? Kip, what do you, you're, you're on mute, Kip. Um, sorry about that. I was on the other screen. Um, so size of reservoir limits ability to support additional recreational activities and uses. Yep. Not very big. Well, and I apologize because I wasn't at the last meeting, so it's not fair. Um, but it's, it's fair. Can you explain to me like what, 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 what the size of the reservoir limits, what that means? Uh, when uh, I think it was Dave Conti when he was talking to us, um, especially at the last time he came to talk to us, um, he specifically, um, we, we were talking about, you know, fishing or kayaking or something. And he specifically said the reason the, um, and, 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 and why you could do that at Quabbin and you can't hear. And the reason was because of the amount of water. So Quabbin is like, you know, right, a five, bird. 10 times bigger. Right. And so all the, whatever bacteria people bring in by doing all the things they do, it all, you know, the, there's enough dilution of stuff, but that. Right. Right. So that's, yeah. Um, okay, I, I think, I guess I understand that point now. Thank you. I mean, my, my comment would be, um, but they're also drinking the Quabbin Reservoir and we're not drinking water. That's the other big takeaway from me is that, you know, this is an emergency backup, but it's non-potable. Um, at least in the short term, right? So, that is correct. I, you know, I, I mean, I'm going to push back a little bit on, you know, increased uses of that water. Um, you know, I mean, we had 105 degrees last week. People are, you know, on the verge of dying and it's like, there's no place to go cool off. And are we going to see more days like that? And should we be considering looking at that reservoir as a place for people to go to cool off? Um, so that's, you know, there's this push pull. I, I mean, I, I, you know, the, that it is not drinking water. You know, we don't need to really worry about bacteria in it. I mean, someday it could become again, but there's a whole lot of work to deal with those kind of contaminants like bacteria and other things that might be there if it was going to be, drinking water. And um, so I just, uh, yeah, I, that's my comment. I, and I do, and I appreciate it. I, and the size now makes sense to me. I was a little concerned about what that actually meant. So. And in, 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 Kip, in addition to uh, talking about the size and the limit, uh, you know, for contamination and things, his real point was there are so many places that people can Unlike what you said, there are so many places, in his opinion, that people can recreate in different ways on the water in this general area 
why would you take a risk in a city reservoir? That's his point. Um, in other words, uh, yeah. go to Hamden Ponds. That's so a, he didn't. He wasn't specific. Okay. No, and that is a, that is a good point. Um, it was a good point. And furthermore, the I think with your idea of using the reservoir to cool off is terrific. Some people are smart enough to do it. Most people go to Ocean State job lot and buy another air conditioner. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I, I, I'm not looking to debate the. Okay, I'm not either. I, just, I mean, you know, that's we talked about liability of swimming and things too, and you know, their insurance policy doesn't like it. You know, allow it. I'm like, well, get a new insurance policy. You know, and you know, and, and Hamden Ponds is 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 a great just, alternative, and it's just an example. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's but you know, and it's funny because, um, I I think. I'm trying to think who it was. It might've been some, I don't know if it was Terry Shepard, somebody I had a little email exchange with, or, and it was like, you know, a bigger problem is like people swimming in the canals to try to stay cool. And, you know, um, you know, it's just, it, it's, I, I guess I feel partially like, our, you know, our charge was to look at what other activities could take place up there. Um, you know, you could, Oh, I, and and uh, and Mike Falsetti called me a couple of weeks ago. With he had been out in the Adirondacks, I think, and he came upon a small lake where there was a private company that was set up that was doing kayaking. They rented kayaks, and you could paddle around on the on the little lake. And he's like, "Is that something we could do at Whiting Street?" And it's like, you know, physically, yes, you could, right? I mean, you, but you probably need, well, one, you need the water department's approval, two, you, you know, you would need to find a vendor who would go out and buy kayaks and you have to drive up there and get in one. So yeah, you could, but there's a lot to do between here and there. And, um, and you know, and I think the same thing with swimming and, and um, you know, you're, there, there are, obstacles to doing these things, but there's no prohibition against doing them. And um, other than policy of the Water Commission, and I won't argue whether that's wise or unwise, it's, it just is what it is. And, um, but I think I wanna be careful about saying these are pro, you know, there's, you can't do that. You know, the reservoir's too small, you couldn't swim in it. Well, you know, Yes, the Quabbin is 20 times larger and the water gets diluted, but they're also drinking that water. We're not drinking our water. And, uh, you know, when I think about not, you know, also the network of biking trails and hiking trails and, you know, you're out there hiking, wouldn't it be nice to go for a nice swim? Um, so that's all. <laughs> Pretty good. I, I just think that, I think that the wording, I understand what you're saying. I think the wording though, the wording is limits, uh, not prohibits, right? Like the size of the reservoir really is a factor that plays into this. It doesn't completely 100% preclude those other things, but it does make them more difficult. So I'm, I'm comfortable with the wording. I think that it, it leaves a small window open, which is, I basically think what there is, like a small window, not a big window. Oh, you're muted. I don't disagree with anything, any of that. And it's fine with, the language is fine with me. I was trying to get my head around what- the, What that what, meant, yeah. And we, we struggled with trying to figure out, you know, from what he said, how to, you know, Okay, I'm good. I'm gonna mute okay. myself again. Um, uh, on this list, anything else people wanna add as an issue? Capitalize Mount Tom. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm gonna to have to go through and check my capitals and whatever all through it, make sure I'm consistent. My business partner would be saying, oh yeah, look at her. 
<laughs> so yeah, um, I'll go through and check all capitalization, make sure I'm consistent here. I, and I think back in one of those other slides, I think Wyckoff has a K in it somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you had that or in the copy I have in front of me, maybe you changed yep. it. There you go. It's got it. It's got a K in it now. <laughs> Thanks, Harry. Um, let's see. Whatever, uh, heading, whatever heading we added to issues for parallelism, yeah. you want to add it to opportunity? Yeah. Yeah. What I, what I, that's a good point, Kate. I, what I would call it is opportunities identified through discussion. That's what I'm doing. Since we, perfect. That's what I got. Great. So, and then I can get rid of the little opportunities. Okay, so everybody ready for the list? Oh. So, shared belief that this is a precious resource and jewel for the community. Everybody good that that's the first one? Yep. Okay, develop a comprehensive vision for the Mount Tom, which will capitalize. Mount Tom area, including the reservoir. Preservation of the reservoir as a public resource. Planned public use and recreation. Cooperation among neighbors, partners, city, stakeholders to develop overarching framework and solve current and future problems. Marlene, I wonder if for the previous bullet, we might want to say planned and manage public okay. use and recreation. All right. Got it. And that's good. Um, educational resource. And the last one was revenue opportunities from uh, protection actions. Yeah, of course, what I think, what the people who charged this committee to study the reservoir want to see here is revenue opportunities from other activity which isn't something that we really heard much of. Yeah, I mean, this is from the people that we talked to. So this, you know. We did hear about selling water. We did hear about selling water. So you might be able to say here, revenue opportunities consistent with protection of the reservoir. Not sure what that really changes, but. Okay, consistent with? Yep, protection. With protection? You could say protection of the, of the reservoir. Consistent with revenue, rev, re, if I could speak, reservoir protection. Revenue opportunities consistent with revenue. Reservoir the protection of the protection. reservoir. Yeah. Okay. Revenue opportunities consistent with protection of the reservoir. Yeah. I think. Is that it? It's good. Okay. I mean, Kate, you know, we did say in the in the previous one is kind of the identi identification of the issue. So it does, you know, it talks about costs and revenues. That's yep. true there may maybe we could make it clearer that we were considering all those you know it's a point i still have i mean i i still think that this list should be more you know they should all have um you know a verb an active verb that we're you know and sound more like a recommendation but i know that others feel like we ought to get the public comment before we really make a yeah. statement like these are our recommendations. I mean, my personal view is that people, you know, if you tell them what you're thinking about and say you still want input, at least they understand, you know, 
I mean, they can still, you know, we still would take their comments and, and again, it's not in stone, but, and then the other list was, was our, you know, like you said, it was more of the issues that were identified. I, I just think in how we state them is still important and there are, they're not all consistent, but they're pretty good. You did a nice job of cleaning them up. Well, if there's any wording you want to throw in there, let me know, Jeff. I guess I, I wonder, Marlene, whether um, whether we add a bullet point the way you just phrased it, and but keep the keep the bullet point you already have, because I kind of feel I feel like there's two different things. There are revenue opportunities from protection actions, like having conservation restriction. But there might be other revenue opportunities that are consistent with protection of the reservoir. Well, on the on the slide before that, um, we don't we do list on on the uh, on the previous slide costs and revenues from all of the above. Yeah. The only thing we haven't said that we heard specifically was selling water. Right which we could add to a list somewhere. Selling water or conservation restrictions, right? Right. Yeah. So maybe you just keep it the way you had it before and then that's fine. Okay. Well, and then, yeah, I mean. Yeah. And then, you know, the next slide, the last slide is just next steps, public input. And then we develop the series of recommendations for city council. So that's all we got. Anything further on it? And okay. I can, I can try to like pretty it up if you want, or someone else can volunteer to do that. Marlene, maybe uh, when you get home, we could sit down either at your house or mine and try to get it into um, a format of some sort. Well, I'm thinking about um, consistent clauses and things that Jeff is talking about. So that yeah, we can do that. That the language is doesn't jump from from one kind of statement to another. <clears throat> and and images are always important. Um, yep. And while we were talking earlier, it occurred to me that, you know, maybe a photo of the sign that they hang out there that says what's allowed or not allowed might be an effective. Yeah, image. I mean, so, you know, so there's, there's no artwork here. So, you know, I can go, back in and look for pictures or photos or um, so if anybody has any specific ideas, um, a lot of this, a lot of the, um, the making it pretty with stuff is way above my pay grade. Well, <laughs> if I could jump okay. in here for just a second, Albert, I think you probably got some wonderful photography. Do you think you could come up with um, some add-in pictures for this presentation? We certainly could uh, look through the files. I am, and I have friends who have f far more material than I. I think if I got the word out, we could flood you with plenty of the material. So. Well, a flood we don't need. <laughs> well, some of your photography would be wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have a I have a storm coming through. I have to go run and close my doors. Close your door. <laughs> okay. I I certainly have many uh, photos of uh, going around and some old uh, some old uh, postcards. Uh, most of my ones going around are it could be fall foliage stuff around the reservoir and or with my grandkids uh, going through. So I mean I can. Of, of the hundreds I have, I think I can uh, come up with uh, eight or 10 uh, that might be appropriate. 
Please in fact, I was also, thinking of you, Harry. I just didn't want to name you by name you in person. That um, that there's anybody we could draw upon, it would be you. So you didn't want to set me up, huh? No, I didn't want to set you up. So historic <laughs> photos, historic photos might be nice too for those that keep such things. I keep such things, but I'm not sure I have anything on the uh, reservoir. Well, I would ask. I can look. You I'm well, going to ask you to take a look, see what you've got, and let Marlene know. Well, give us a couple of days, a week. You got it. Okay. Now, speaking of a couple of days, before I get to the next thing, <laughs> um, it suddenly occurred to me that when we hold these public hearings, playing secretary for the meetings is not going to be a job that the committee can really take on. So I did call Terry Murphy this afternoon, who is more than happy to see what he could do about finding us some funding, but it's going to have to go through the city council, which of course is now on vacation until the 3rd of August. So we may not be able to hold our public hearings unless somebody feels really brave about taking minutes for that event until we hear back. He also said he would look into a site at City Hall or the Annex and the equipment that we would need to do this PowerPoint presentation, have microphone as needed and so forth. And he'll get back to me and as soon as he does, I will do a uh, report by email to everybody. But we may have to hold off a bit on scheduling a public hearing until we can get the financial support we need. He's happy to do anything that we need, any amount. And he did say he would look into the cost of a secretary for two public hearings, okay? Okay. In, I missed that. Unless, we doing it in person? No, we didn't doing, get there. Okay. If we're doing public hearings, we're going to need real secretarial help rather than try to manage that by ourselves. So Terry Do you think to... do you think the city council would loan us Jeffrey Anderson Burgos for such a thing? Well, it would be wonderful. I'm just well, wondering if that's an ask that is worth if making. If get the funding, maybe he would do it as an additional chore. I'm sure he would. He's, he's a great guy to work with. Yeah, he's a good guy. Then the other item we have that's really on the agenda is that Jeff asked me about a welcome to people and I did type something up and put it in the notes I sent out, but I don't know if anybody found it. So quickly, uh, the Whiting Street Reservoir Committee was set up through an ordinance from the city, Holyoke City Council. Its purpose is delineated by Mike Sullivan, one of the authors of the ordinance, is to review the uh, status of the reservoir with an eye to finding if there are any further uses to which it might be put to financially benefit the city of Holyoke. We have been working for the past half year and now are ready to listen to ideas and thoughts regarding the reservoir and its future from all interested parties. Prior to taking public comment, we will present to you an outline detailing how we have proceeded thus far Marlene Connor, Vice Chair of the Committee, will now present this information to you in a PowerPoint slideshow. I think that's quite nice. I do too. If you yep. think of anything that ought to be added, let me know. Then I did some rules for a hearing they're pretty simple and straightforward, and there may be a lot more to put in here. But thus far, uh, this would be following the presentation, 
the rules the committee has set for public participation. This period of the present meeting will run, run for no more than two hours. Further public hearings will be held as needed. One, please sign in to chat. This is um, if we do it on Zoom. On Zoom. If you wish to make a statement, include your name, address, and either email or phone number. Two, limit your comments to two minutes. Three, people will be called on in the order in which they are queued in chat. Four, please do not repeat at length prior testimony. If it is something you agree with, please simply state your agreement. Five, all non-relevant statements will be cut off. What else you got? Ooh, can I can I cut them off? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> You're on mute. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for there. That's so, right. I, I, I just wonder about where you say further public hearings will be held as needed. I want, so that kind of indicates we're definitely going to have at least one more. Do you want to give yourself a little more room and say further public hearings may be held if needed? I like that better. Thank you. It just gives us a little, you know, out. Out. A way out, way out. Yeah. Let me find my page. And, and the, I had another comment on the slide showed that at the beginning, I, I just had, I don't know what others think, Marlene, where it says the, it kind of makes us possessive to the city council. Oh, yeah. I, I wonder if instead you might, you might simply say something like, um, say the, the Holyoke, um, Whiting Street, you know, Whiting Reservoir, committee and then say established by order of the Holyoke City Council. Okay. I, just, I don't know what others think, but it just seems to make us possessive. It seems like, I mean, we are, I mean, we're not independent, but on the other hand, we're not doing their bidding either. You know? So the Whiting, try that again, Jeff. So the Whiting. So in other words, I, yeah. I would call it the, I, the Holyoke Whiting Reservoir committee and then say just in smaller print underneath it i would say established by order of the holyoke city council Got it. if others if others agree with that it just kind of no, that's more elegant Sorry to make you go back. You did a nice, really nice job of going, of capturing all our comments from last time. <laughs> Sorry, you have to go through this yeah. another time. Okay. But, yeah. well, you can you can look in my size size differentiation for how big it is and how small oh, the right. established by it. <laughs> oh yeah, having fun. Of course, of nice we can. Yeah. Since we can't see it, you get to choose it. Yeah, but I'm going to send it out again, you know. Right? Yeah, of course. Would have been nice if we gave you comments before tonight, but, you know. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah, that brings us to a very important question. What do you want to do about another meeting? It seems to me we are ready to roll as far as this presentation goes. I'm looking for any additional rules for a public hearing that anyone might have. And obviously, if we do this live, I'll change the rules around to adopt them to a live situation. Right now, they're written for Zoom. Uh, and obviously, as soon as I hear back from Terry, I will be reporting to everybody about what he has to say. I think Kate has her hand up. Yeah, Sue Ellen, can, can one of the rules, can it be said either out loud in the rules or somewhere, maybe it's in the presentation as well, 
some people may come to the hearing and not feel comfortable speaking, but have something they would like to contribute. Um, there might be something in the rules that says, you know, written written comments can be submitted to. They can submit them in the chat box. Yeah, but they might, but some people might be like, oh, you know, I'd like to think about this and send a letter in or something, you know, and if we have a, you know, written comments can be accepted. Yeah, we just need to tell them where to send them to. Yeah. I think that's, that's a, I think that's a good point. Real good. Because I, I often don't know what I want to say until after I've heard. Well, there's also people might not want attention brought to them. Yeah. That's, good that's exactly my feelings. I, I like to think about everything you say and then put, put something down on paper. You've, you're full of great stuff and I, you know, I have to think about your, what you're saying. Okay, how about written comments may be sent to City Council staff, office, Holyoke City Hall. Perfect. Perfect. Probably okay. should say, probably should say something like care of waiting reservoir committee or something. Please. More perfect. And, and the other thing I was wondering about the other topic is um, and maybe we're not ready to talk about this yet. Maybe this is a future meeting. I'm not sure um, what outreach we're going to do to try to make sure people know that this is happening. I know we don't know what the date is, so we're not actually doing that outreach yet, but how are we going to, do we have, I think it would be useful to try to generate ideas about how we are getting word out about this, because I think it, it's one of the, one of the shortcomings of the way things tend to operate in Holyoke is that a lot of people never find out about, a lot of constituencies don't hear about things that are happening. Well, thank you, Kate. Media is my next item. Okay. And that is exactly it. Uh, getting the word out about these meetings. And last time we met, we did mention the three area newspapers, i.e. The Sun, the Republican, and the Northampton Gazette. Many of you have Facebook accounts. And I sort of figure somebody with a Facebook account could put things up on Facebook several times. Any other ideas? City's website. Oh, of course. Right. There you go. Perfect. Maybe even, maybe even a small poster or something on a couple of the entrances up at the reservoir. Very good. Yeah. That's a great idea. Very good. Well, now again, they would have to somehow be weatherproof. I'll take and care of that. It would be pretty easy to do a poster, but to weatherproof it somehow. Yeah. Kip just said he'd take care of it. I got. It. I'll take down that task. Okay. In constant area do, data on where they should be posted to get the most viewership, but I'll help you with that. Yeah, I'll put something together when we're when we're ready. Yeah. I was I was wondering about um, doing something with Holyoke Media, like whether Johan might um, do a promo a bit about it, interview somebody from the committee. That'd be a good idea. Mike Sullivan should say something on whatever uh, whatever information uh, vehicle he uses. <laughs> I have a Mike little Sullivan bit of a should... fear about this being about uh, many, <laughs> many, many potential people might use this for I hear you. I hear political. you. Take that back. Take it back. But but there 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 are forums. But I'm I'm wondering too about reaching, you know, reaching constituencies that don't that are generally underserved by outreach. Like um, you know, how can we get this to particularly folks in the lower wards who might like to have more access? 
There's the Spanish language radio station, right? That's still, that survived the pandemic, I was hoping. Mm -hmm. Telemundo. Maybe, a, you know, like a, some kind of press release and um, that goes to the newspapers and the couple radio stations and make it in Spanish and English and you know, is, uh, well, Mass Live, I was going to say, but that's a Republican anyway, so that would be going with the Republican, I guess. But, and what else, like maybe some of the other organizations that are downtown who might be interested if we printed up something simple that submit your comments here and uh, probably should put an email address on there also, right? I mean, it's simple enough to make a Whiting Street Reservoir committee at gmail.com. That takes about two seconds and doesn't go. Yeah. So and and the, the other, um, I was thinking like the, what is it? The, the New England, Pol the public radio or something or? Oh, that's yeah. great. They would definitely do that. I bet a few of us are contributors too. Yep, I'm sure they would do that. Yeah, definitely. That's a I'm great I'm not idea. sure at all they would do that. <laughs> uh, I have run into a couple of situations over the years where they say if it doesn't benefit them, they're not interested in doing anything. Oh, that stinks. Okay. Yeah, it's a little selfish. Mm -hmm. hmm. On the other hand, they might do something with, what is it, PLV? Cutting line. I can't remember the name of their public interview programs. Yeah. Connecting point. That's that's one of them. Yep. Well, there, and there was a woman from Amherst, Jeff, who was doing. I think she got promoted to national, but she was doing like conservation stories every week. I know my wife used to work with her. I can, I'm not gonna remember her name, but I remember she worked with my wife. So I'll check with her. But they did run a series like weekly of, you know, the salamanders were hatching this week and. Yeah, I can't remember her name. She worked, yeah. yeah. Right. So I think, I think that it would be useful. I mean, we need to have a, um, we will need a press release, but Sue Ellen, if you are following up with the mayor, can they also provide funding to have it translated into Spanish? I mean, my Spanish is conversational, but it's sure not good enough to make a, an official. Um... Well, I would lay odds that we don't really need to pay somebody to do that. But the city um, may also... be able to do it. Nelsa probably can do that. But I think that that's a request to the mayor probably still. Yeah, I, I agree that it would be nice to have it in Spanish. I'll tell you what, I'll even take that on. We decide, we come up with a little poster, I'll get it translated. Cool. And I'll, pick them and I'll laminate them and I'll stick them up there and figure out where else we want. Great. It's a nice offer. <laughs> See how it goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Depends where you um, stick it, you know. The posters, we should put them up at, you know, the Stop and Shop, um, both Stop and Shops in Holyoke. So I'll work on drafting something. I'm not going to get them printed. I'm not going to do anything. I'll send them to Sue and we can circulate them and make sure that people think we're saying what we need to say. And then, but it won't take long and they'll be ready in plenty of time for uh, when we know we're going to have our public hearing. The senior center would be another good spot. Yep, senior center. Okay, then what I'm going to do is while Kip is working on this, would everybody send me a list of places other than the newspapers 
And what else have I got here? Yeah, that's that's just what I was going to say. I'm going to make a list of where I think it should go. Um, but places where you think either a news release or a news article belongs. Or, or just to have the information sent to organizations who can share the info. Right. And then the other thing is that the, um, the papers today are very short on columnists. So one of the things we can do is see if we can gather some, they're very, and then even more short on photographers. So if we can get some pictures that might be appropriate um, and we can sit down and get a couple of things written that are different so that we can send a simple news release as well as a story, we can start sending those out as soon as we can start landing a date. Yep. And I won't know about that until we talk to the mayor. Good. I, the thing that still keeps, uh, right now the presentation says next steps. And, and so in Sue Ellen's, also it, it seemed like, <clears throat> Sue Ellen, I loved your welcome, but I also think you want, might want to say something about what happens next because people are coming and, and wondering that. So we would say that at the end of the presentation, but I also think it would help to say it at the beginning, you know, a little bit about just, you know, in other words, that we're going to provide, you know, formal recommendations to city council and by, you know, give them some estimate. I think we ought to consider some estimate of, of timing. Um, you know, maybe we just say late fall, maybe we say, I mean, whatever we say, but it just seems like we would want to give some expect, you know, people are, uh, you know, they don't know what we're thinking. So it just seems like we would want to say something like that. And that, and that, and, and again, that goes back to, are we going to, if we're going to have formal recommendations to the city council, then it goes back to that other public, you know, discussion of whether we're going to have another public meeting at all. So I just think we need to think about those. And if there are other major things that are next steps that we know of now, and we can think we can tell them, I think that would be helpful. I don't think it needs to be a lot of things. I just think, you know, two or three bullets that maybe Sue Ellen can say first right up front. And then, and then Marlene can repeat yeah. in the presentation. Let me see what I can add to this. It shouldn't be difficult. I, I can't think of anything else we're going to be doing other than once we have the public input, we're going to have some pretty lively discussions about this final report. Yep. And those meetings, of course, while they won't be public hearings, will be open to the public to listen in on. Yep. So Albert, do you have pictures and stuff that we can throw in the presentation? Oh, sure. There's, there's plenty of material. I, uh, the only thing I ask of you is to help me out a little bit in terms of uh, so I can narrow down to what you're looking for. Um, okay. Uh, oh, maybe we a, a group, a group talk about how we want to, you know, uh, jazz up the presentation with stuff besides my. No, you want a front page, obviously, and that's going to be a nice image of the reservoir. But there are there are other things you'd want. You would probably want to give us give me a little guidance, and then okay. I. If I don't have it, I'll see who does. I have a, a, a offer to Kip and to Dave. Uh, if you are planning on posters, I assume like 11 by 17 coast posters and Dave, you have a list of uh, target places you'd like them to go. I will do the uh, 
the legwork to get them to those places and et cetera. Okay. Thank you very much. You. Oh, by the way, the question is who, Kip, uh, how are you going to get your posters done? Um, well, when they're ready to print, my, my, yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? It, you know, you're going to want them, you want them print ready. Uh, that'll keep your costs down and uh, that kind of thing. And, you know, and they should be, you know, if you're going to put them up in the reservoir, they should be on foam board or something like that. And, I mean, I think Kip had some ideas. Okay. I, I, I go to a, like a local copy place <laughs> and make things when I need them like that. And um, okay. yeah, I hadn't been thinking foam board. I was thinking, you know, laminated or something and stapling them to a post okay. or taping them or a tree or something. But, but maybe you're right. Maybe we should do something a little. Yeah. You only now. need two or three at the reservoir. It's not like you need them at every corner. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. So um, no. I can say I've not put anything on poster board, but I'm not really intimidated by it. If I and if I run into an obstacle, I'll reach out for some help. <laughs> you know that poster board material can be bought at Michael's relatively yeah. inexpensively, and um, right. some of it, if I might, if I'm not mistaken, comes with an overlay. Acrylic, you know, it's clear plastic. You can just roll it over. Keeps the thing, you know, in shape. Okay. So let me ask my question again. Uh, do you want to have a second meeting this month and go over all of these media lists and so forth? Um, poster placing lists. Obviously, until... We hear from the mayor, we can't discuss when and where and how to hold these hearings. Yeah. So our second meeting this month might be very important. You wanna go ahead with it? Well, if we have a draft too, like, you know, if, if there's a draft of the press release, we can just, we can have that ready to go essentially. If, if we meet, we can, the more ducks we have in a row, the faster we can move once we know mm. our target date. Well, tell me what to do. The next, if we have another meeting, um, it would be, looks to me like the 20th. It's fine with me. Which would give fine us with me. Oh, Sue Ellen? Um, I'm going to be um, uh, back from Rhode Island after at the end of this week, but next week I'm traveling for business, so I won't be around. But so if we do our meeting on the 20th, I can come see you on the 19th and we Fine. can do the Fine. punching it up thing. I'm probably going to be away on the 20th, but I'm not sure back and forth to uh, Connecticut um, for whatever that's worth. The annual family get together. That's it. <clears throat> but you never know, maybe I can find a computer to work down there. There you go. From one of the grandkids, maybe. So it's a possibility. As long it's as the 20th. Worst comes to worst, Harry, I'll loan you my iPad. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, well, they, they have to set it up for me because I'm uh, pretty useless as far as uh, as far as that goes. Probably pretty happy you're paying for the vacation, though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you probably are. Yeah. Okay. So we'll have the next meeting on the 20th. We will try to get any information on location for posters, uh, places we want to send uh, media releases to, and so forth. And uh, 
by then we'll also be able to set some dates. Okay. So we'll be able to go right to work on printing the posters and so forth. Okay. Anything okay. else? Sounds good. I'll and try to find some uh, photos and send them to who, Marlene. That'd be great. If I can figure that out. If, if not, yeah. somebody will get a call. Right. It would be nice to have a photo kind of yeah, for each I mean, of the I... 10 slides. You know, so, so for Albert, Albert, do you have a copy of the PowerPoint? Not yet. No. Marlene, can you flip Absolutely. Albert one? Albert, I will send it your way, Albert. Appreciate so, it. Wait, so, so that gives you some guidance on what we're looking for. Yeah, that for would help me out something. a lot. Yeah. Yep. And while you're doing okay. that, think about pictures that might go with a newspaper article that we might want to Good point. Uh, present yep. with the article when we send it. Um, Cynthia Simison at the Republican, uh, Dusty Christensen, I guess, at uh, the Gazette. I don't know who's doing the sun anymore. But, and I'd like different things in each paper. So there's something that'll catch the paper and really get the article into it. Okay. Just a small thought, if I may. Um, David Conti should be asked if posters are okay. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'll do that. Okay. Okay. He may also have some uh, older photos of the. Yeah, road. I was going to ask him about that too. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I would think so. Because if he says yes, we can ask him to put him at Ashley as well. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Heaven help us. <laughs> that was pushing help. a little. Yeah. Um, motion to motion to end the meeting. <laughs> so move. I'll take that second. Uh, uh, Dave, are you the seconder? I'll be second. the seconder. Dave. I'll send around. I'll check my capitals and all the stuff from today and send everybody a new version uh, by tomorrow morning. And Albert, I'll include you on that list. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for capturing all that. Good seeing everyone. Yeah. yeah thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.